I want to talk about the, now it's 10 years for the creation of the RBCC. And I think everybody knows, but uh, uh, in November 2003, uh, the LUMO recognized uh, uh, the Regional Blue Air Collision Center for Region 6 Europe and established it at this Sanjay Separatory, running by IMET in Carayana. We are here. Uh, we are in a sub subtropical region in a mountain. So with clear sky, we can make routinely land lake calibrations like in Manoa Loa in Hawaii. The idea is to link the, the, the triad with the triad in, in Toronto uh, through calibration with 17. With issues with the, everybody knows about the triad in environmental Canada, in 2011, W. Mossack allowed us to transfer our own calibration to the campaign. So since the next campaign in Arosa, RBCC will transfer his own Langley calibration. We uh, mainly make campaigns. So um, there are three types of campaigns we make. We had two regular campaigns, one in the south of Spain in Huelva, the other is in Arosa. Uh, the idea of this campaign is to have a knowledge of the status of the network and transfer the calibration for the reference instrument. And also, is, in some campaigns, we have a Google Dobson comparison. We made the campaigns at the same time that the regional Dobson Calibration Center in, of, uh, running by Uf Kohler, Germany. Then we have this absolute calibration campaign that like is now, it's now run, running an absolute calibration campaign with the instrument from Eberhard Kada 145. And also, we have a, a special campaign for Nordic uh, conditions. And the aim for this campaign is to investigate the calibration uh, methodology at two different um, environmental conditions. A subtropical area, like Isanya, we compare with the values in when we make the calibration at, at Sotankila. Uh, we use this campaign it's mainly for research, so um, to investigate mainly to best on issues. Um, in the last, uh, this was the objective of the, uh, this is a project to establish, establish the ETC sensitivity calibration in, those, in two different places. In this year, since 2005, we make uh, all these campaigns, uh, different colors are referred to different campaigns. The biggest, com for number of instruments, the biggest campaign are in Huelva, usually about 15. The last one was 18 instruments. Uh, the Arosa campaign is less, uh, popular, let's say, we are about between five and seven instruments. Um, uh, also, the Nordic campaigns are really small. And also, we have some instruments who come to Isanya for calibration. So this is the blue. Um, the idea was to have the regional rural calibration center, I have to thanks to Karel Banicek for, and Emilio Cueva for his initiative. The idea was to have the same structure calibration system under GAU that we have with the Dobson. So in 2002, in a meeting in, in Toronto, it was also a Brewer meeting there, and they recommend that the WMO uh, uh, build the regional Brewer calibration center. Uh, why? Uh, we have a stay uh, <laughs> measurement since uh, 2002. We are uh, recognized a station, part of NDAC, uh, at that time NDSC. Uh, we have trained personnel, we have experience with campaigns, mainly for UV, for, for these Nordic campaigns, or the Dawson campaigns in 94, and some national campaigns for UV in the Aerosillo in 99 and 2001. We have uh, designed a good set of complementary measurements. Uh, now they call, at that time, we don't call about uh, uh, super site, but uh, now Isanya is also super site with TIR, NDAC, DOAS, Oson Sondings, and we have the calibration laboratory. And also, the, main, the most important reason is we have the condition to perform uh, Langley calibration. And we can maintain independently the, the reference. So, in 2003, we confirmed officially the, this nomination. And Format was INM at that time, now we are IMET, has the compromise to have another, a new instrument. We have only one, so we have now two instruments for, for the calibration, maintain the link through 17 every year, 
and organize one calibration once uh, uh, in odd uh, years in, in Arenosillo and even years in, in Erosa. And some personal uh, was dedicated to this project, and even with this bad situation, economic situation in Spain the last year, they maintained his compromise of personal who was very useful for us. When we start, we go to Alec Kalov. We make some short uh, preparation meeting. John Granard was there, and he explained how they uh, manage with the Canadian network, and we explained how we make the Langley at Isanya. We evaluate the data for the base, base there, and also we show how we manage uh, our network. And we make an announcement of the first campaign. In the first campaign, everything for me was very nice. So the, when we make the Langley in 2005, the value we get was very similar than we get for the transfer. There will be a poster tomorrow, uh, this afternoon who you can see this in, in more detail. Uh, the, at, that, at that campaign, the instrument uh, will be calibrated by EOS at Isanya before the campaign. We are familiar with the tools developed mainly for Bolodia and EOS and Martin to calibrate the instrument, so we, can, we are allowed to use it. We know the procedure for Canadian network, and we already developed our original database in Veronesia, so we can use this database for the process of the data of the campaign. And also will be a parallel campaign, so we, say we perform the calibration, but also IOS will perform this, this calibration. So we make the jump. It was the calibration in 2003. Only five instruments for the Spanish network, very few people at the terrace, only five people in the, cool, in the classroom, and then you make the jump to the 2005 calibration with about 30 people there. And, and then the next step, everything was easy, and then we had Sauna campaign. When we have the Sauna campaign, everything changed. Everything was clear during calibration. Now we, we have some issues. During the Sauna campaign, we have a lot of uh, awesome instruments measuring the, with measurement at Sodankila. Uh, five brewers, the double and single, two Dobsons, DOAs, SAOs, and many satellites. You can see here the, all the, blue, the, the brewers in the platform, the Sonsons, the Dobsons, the LiDAR. And we have uh, a missing condition for a campaign. Total columns from 400,000 units to 520. For a person from a tropical area like me, it's really amazing. I never measured more than 318 <laughs> units. Uh, high variability, strong gradient of ozone, uh, top of um, top of pause folding, and very good condition for observation, 70% fair sky. And when, when we, we get at, at sauna, first was very nice results. Three independent brewers, the brewer from NASA, our brewer, the brewer from Canada, the double brewer, agree pretty, pretty well. But then the, when you, we compare with the single brewers, the single brewers goes really down. At that time, when you can think of, oh, it's an issue of calibration, but then 30 days later, the instrument are agree. Single and double are agree again, and only differs when you have high solar cell angles and high, and high ozone. And another implication we try to model, Alexander make these model results, and the important point uh, for this model is if you want to have agreement with the model, we have to calibrate in two parameters. I make some bracket for the Brewer calibration. So Brewer calibration is a cycle. And mainly, this is the characteristic of your instrument. The F is with your measurement. For the web and calibration, we, as Julian they say in the first day, we take for the lamps, and only DTC is transfer. But you can also derive the web and calibration, the ozone association coefficient, for the comparison for a reference. What, what we get at the campaign is uh, to be agree in agreement with the model. We, ha we, we have to use the two parameters calibration. The ozone association coefficient we measure is not agreed with the model, or the model is not agreed with, the, with that. So they have serious implications in, in calibration. So, 
in summary, in sauna, we have the stride issues. We have the question about one parameter versus two parameter calibration. We have the issue with the ozone cross section. We will compare with satellites or we compare with those instruments. They use different cross sections. Uh, we find that when Brewer and Dobson, the temperature effect are different depending on the cross section we use. Uh, the, Brewer, the Brewer algorithm solution for Sodankil at that time was far for the, the solution of the algorithm, it was pretty far for the campaign conditions. And even Brewer and Dobson were not agree in, in the scale at the campaign. So, in this campaign in 2006, 2007, they just drive all our research for the next year. So, we try to solve all these things that you, we find in, in this particular campaign uh, during this, the, the next campaign. This is an example when, for the 2007 campaign, when you use the two-point calibration, you derive the ETC and also the social coefficient by comparison for the reference, you have a very nice agreement. When you use one point calibration, you have worse agreement. But you have best agreement because you are compensating uh, calibration or instrumental errors by putting information in the ozone awesome cross-section. And probably, and we test with an instrument, this calibration is not valid when, you go, go the, when the conditions are different. Uh, also, we find it during the campaign that uh, not only uh, intentionally you use uh, a wrong ozone assumption, if you use the two parameter, uh, uh, the one parameter calibration, when you derive only DTC from the, from the comparison, the, the ozone assumption coefficient comes from the measurement. But when you, we take the measurements during the campaigns, they are not agreed with the constant, they are inside the instrument. So, in reality, there are some number of instruments who are using two-point calibration to compensate some instrumental issues. Finally, with this question, in, in 2008, in, in campaigns in Arosa, which was only well-maintained and well characteristic instrument, and we find that both calibration are agreed. There was not disagreement between both calibrations. So we use that for an indication of the uh, quality of the instrument or the, the knowledge you have for the instrument. And in the, during the last campaign, we can relate this discordance between one point and two point elevation with some, uh, some characteristics. In the presentation of my colleague, Juanjo, will go in detail of these instrumental issues, we find it. So, if a proper calibration is used, both calibrations are agreed, and we use this agreement like an indication of the quality of the instrument. Uh, we find class one, we call class one instrument, so the ETC, if this agreement is in between two metals are plus minus five ETC units, it's around 0.4% in ozone, uh, and one uh, step in the micrometer step, and this is about 0.3% in, in, so in about class one instrument is 0.5% in agreement with, with the reference. And uh, uh, the rest of the instrument at class two, yeah, uh, mainly after the calibration, so you have an ETC agreement between both calibration of 10 units, it's about 0.8, and, or uh, disagreement in also association coefficient about plus minus two steps. In all these campaigns, we found that almost two thirds of the instruments shows an agreement plus minus 0.5% after two year calibration. And I always remember the plot of, uh, with Adopson, he showed an improvement of the quality during the years during these 10 years, almost all the campaign has overall the same results. It's sometimes about two-thirds, sometimes below, but in mean, about two-thirds of the instrument are agree, and about 80% is the instrument are plus minus 1%. This is an example for the campaign in 2011. The instrument who is down is the Dobson, but all the instruments are inside plus minus 1% in the daily mean, and, but you have to take into account two, two things. Uh, when we make this analysis, we don't know in previously if we have to apply the subtland correction or not. After the comparison with the reference, you decide if you have to apply your standard correction or you don't have to apply. And the other thing is we are talking about the stride light free uh, region. Here is the ratio, so you see the single instrument becomes to underestimate. 
So all these things I say that uh, two thirds of the instrument have uh, plus minus five percent is only for the low for this region, for the straight light free region. This is at the end when you have the, the final calibration, the difference between two graphs. This is one plus minus one percent, the gray the gray part, and here is sorry, plus minus uh, oh point five percent. So the results are is uh, this was a very good campaign, one of the best, but uh, I think the, the results we have in previous and subsequent campaigns are more or less similar. And we want to finish with the Dobson and Brewer comparison. This was a very nice campaign in, in Atisanya. It was a salute campaign from the reference Dobson and our Brewer in 2012. Uh, as we see in previous campaigns, the difference between Brewer and Dobson is about 1.5%. In some campaigns it's 1%, in some campaigns it's 2%. But usually we have between 1 and 1.5 percent difference between Dobson and Brewer. And when you, we plot against the Oson slant path, here are the Brewers, here are the Dobson, and the comparison is flat. It looks like a, it's not a question of calibration. Uh, ETC calibration is a question also of cross section with the scale. We make the Langley at that time. Here is the the method for the brewer, this is the method of the Dobson, is slightly different. They, uh, because the, uh, the ETC constant in the Dobson is already inside the measurement. They derive only the, uh, the offset. And the offset uh, in this uh, parameter, it gives you by the slope in this line. So as you see, most of the lines are, are flat, so you don't need to correct anything. It's difficult to see in, in the classic Langley or we're using in the Brewer, but here it's more clear. And one of the results that made me more happy is when you plot, plot this difference from the ETC for several instruments, you find, find a quite good relation. So during the Langley, we are measuring the same, even if the Dobson and the Brewer me measure different things or di very different instruments. So, and the noise will be uh, it's atmospheric noise. It's not due to the instruments. And at the end, we apply to this campaign different uh, cross sections. So this is the operative value with the Bassam power who use the Brewer. With the Bassam, they, are, they are different. The Bassam power we use the Dobson. If you we use the uh, Igaco Bassam power, the Igaco was an initiative to study the effect of changing the ozone cross section, and you see some difference between the bus and power, mainly in the brewer. And uh, below, there are DBM, this Damon Maliset Brion, is the cross section we will use NASA and the satellite from NASA, and mainly from those people, and it's terrible for the, dops, for the brewer. So you see that the, the brewer has 3% lower when you apply the Damon Maliset Brion. But if you use the uh, recently measurement by the University of Bremen, cross-section, this really disappeared. The, di the difference between Brewer and Dobson, when you use the same uh, absolute calibration, is, is disappeared. Also, the difference between the CD pair in the Dobson and the ED pair is reduced when you use the... the so it looks like a, the difference is, uh, is due to this, this effect in, in Brewer and Dobson. Uh, in the, my next talk, well, we say in detail uh, all this calculation and also the effect of temperature of, of that. I only want to say, okay, I was to say here, thanks, but <laughs> to thanks to all the people who participate in the campaigns and all the people to help LBCC to, to success. Thank you very much.